What's good you guys, it's Lifestyle from LifestyleDidIt.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to take random sounds and make them into different styles of drums. So I'm going to take this Tascam recorder that I have and record myself hitting like a pillow and just kind of a couple random things and then show you how you can effects process these certain things to make something into a sound that you can actually use as like a kick drum or like a percussive thing. We're really going to be getting into kick drums today because I want to show you like a cool way you could do it with hitting a pillow or a towel, for example, I might do. So I'm going to go ahead and record that and then we're going to switch back in here. I'm going to take that file and show you how we could take these random things that we hit, process them and make them into drums that we could use. All right, so I have the file pulled up right here and you'll see everything that we kind of hit if I go into Edison. Um, you'll find everything in here that we recorded. So you could already hear that this hit could be a kick. And then we have different things right there that could be perks. Let's see what else we have over here. Another thing that might be a kick or like a clap. So you can really affect these differently. I'm gonna go back to that first one I heard this one could definitely be a kick. So all we're gonna do is come in here and kind of cut this out. All right, so that sounds good. I'm gonna just drag it into here. And from here, I'm going to do a little bit of shaping to the sound to kind of get it right. So definitely gonna normalize it. And then I actually need to go back into the audio editor. I need to cut out some of this. So for example, I can cut this out and let's fade this in. And let's see how this sounds. Okay, that sounds good. So I'm gonna fade out the end a little bit more. And now we have something that sounds almost like a kick, but <laughs> we got a lot to go. So let's go ahead and just normalize this. Okay, so it sounds good so far. So this is gonna be like our starting point of this kick. Okay, so I'm just gonna name this real quick. i just name it kick. So what we're gonna do is route this into a mixer track. I'm just going to throw it in mono even though it already is and then just let it play. Okay, so we definitely hear that it needs some EQ shaping. Um, it definitely needs a little bit of compression and I'll probably add like R bass or like one of the FL bass boosters into it. We'll kind of see what we like how it sounds. So, But first thing we're going to do is come in here. I'm going to just apply a low cut to like these super low frequencies. And I'm going to give it a bit of a boost around like 50 hertz maybe. And then I want to fade it out a tiny bit. Okay, it's sounding good so far. I'm going to get rid of some of this mid-range. So I'm going to go in here and cut some of this out. Not too much. And then add a little bit of top end. All right, so it sounds good so far. If you wanted to take all the top end out, you can make it like a deeper kick. For this one, I want to keep it how it is. So the next thing I'm going to add is R bass from Waves. So if you don't have R bass, you can use like Fruity Bass Booster. There's a bunch of different things you can use, but R bass is something you should definitely look into when creating um, stuff like this because it could really change how it sounds. So I'm going to show you guys when I add just R bass, just on the normal preset, nothing happening with it before, after. So if we want, we can go through different types of presets and kind of see what we have. So we hear something we like. So somewhere around here, if I turn down the intensity, mess with the frequency that it's going to be focusing on. So around there sounds really good to me. So if we take off the effects so far and now, get a different kick. So the next thing I'm going to do is go in here and I'm going to get a compressor and I'll just use the fruity compressor. So I'm going to put a ratio maybe like two to three and I'm going to make sure that my attack is slow because I want the transient to come through but my release is a bit faster so we could actually make this punch a little bit harder. And then we're just going to pull down the threshold a bit. Let's make the attack a little slower. 
The only thing I don't like about this compressor is it doesn't really show you where or how much compression you're doing. So let's just before and after. We're peaking around maybe four. So we need to go up a tiny bit. Okay. So if I do before and after with the compressor, sounding pretty good. So, so far we have a kick that sounds pretty good. We could play it on different notes, kind of see where we like it. So I actually like it where it's at. I'm going to fade it a tiny bit more. And then the last thing I'm going to add is just something that I want to add in is a JST clip and it's a clipper. So you don't have to add this. It's just something I like because I want this to have a distorted feel to it. And then I'm just going to blend this back in. All right, that sounds good to me. I'm actually going to take out a little bit of high end from it. And then I'm going to put Edison on the master. It actually doesn't matter where we put it, but it's already here. So I'm going to delete this and record in our new kick. All right, so now we have this kick. We can go in here, delete this. And let's delete a little bit more over here. Now we have a kick. So we started with this and created this. And if we turn it up just a bit, let's normalize it actually. I think I forgot to do that. So here's before and after. Created a pretty cool kick. Now let's do another random sound. Let's go in here, let's do one more. You can hear me talking. Let's do that little shaker right here. This was that pill bottle you saw of vitamins. So I'm just gonna drag this in here and now we get like this cool little shaker. So you could do so much when you're creating these like random sounds. So we can normalize this. We could fade it out, we could reverse it. Let's see. Who knows what you wanna do? We could pitch it, uh, time stretch it. Get some weird sounds. Let's just reset this and let's pitch it down maybe. That sounds cool. I like that. And then let's just solo this, put it in a mixer track. And the first thing I'm going to do is just EQ out some of the bottom end. It sounds like a cool shaker. Let's boost some of this high end, get rid of some of this mid range. I don't like some of that nasty mid range in there. So that already sounds cool. Now let's get kind of weird with it. Let's add like some chorus or I don't know, something to it. Now it's a whole different like weird sound. Oh, I like how that sounds. Let me see before. I actually really like how that sounds. And then maybe we could put like a delay on it. I don't know. Let's get weird. Let's just see what else could sound cool on it. So another thing I like to do before we keep going is like, I'm just going to catch the end part of that. So I'm going to put Edison on the master again. I'm just hit record and then play that sound. So now I just have it sitting there, but now I have like this little end sound just from whatever we just created. And if we reverse that, we could have, you know, so I'll just keep it in Edison on that master and just randomly record when I add effects if something sounds cool so I can go into Edison and be like oh yeah I have another sound right here so we can create millions of sounds just from this and then let's just record this in like I said you can just continue recording and just cut wherever you want so if we just wanted this sound we'll just go in here and go like this and then we'll normalize it and now we have a cool little shaker and then let's do one more sound. Let's get like some type of perk or something. Let's see what we have. Okay, that one sounded cool. I think it's this one right here. 
And like I said, these were just random sounds that were in uh, that closet. So you can get creative with this and go anywhere you want to figure out different sounds. But let's normalize this. I'm going to kind of fade it out a little bit and I'm going to pitch it up. All right, so that sounds cool. Let's throw that in the mixer. I'm actually going to throw it on this same track over here. I'm going to see how these this processing chain sounds. It actually sounds good to me. Let me just make sure it's coming through loud enough. So I'm actually just going to turn the EQ up right here. We're still not clipping, so it's OK. And then let's throw something else random on it. Uh, who knows, maybe a little bit of distortion. Okay, so that sounds good. So let's go ahead and record that really quick. Press record. Now we have like this little hit that we could use and we could layer this with all different types of stuff. So let's drag this in over here. So we have now, let's just call this a perk real quick, just so we know. We'll call this a perk two. And then we have our kick. So the sounds we made was this, a little percussive sound, and this cool kick. And it's crazy how that kick came from this. And then we created it into this. So you can get creative so many ways with this type of stuff. Uh, we could go in here, pitch this kick around, lower it, layer it with one of those other sounds layer it with different other cool sounds you have and just really create so many different styles of things. Um, this is one of the first videos that I'm going to do for this. I'm going to go and do more of these, but I kind of want to just show you guys a few ways that you could really start with kicks because it's one of my favorite things to do is kick drums, 808s. So this one was going to be on kicks from, like I said, a pillow or a towel. We ended up choosing a towel and it ended up sounding really good. Usually I'll use a pillow or like an empty box or go hit something that has lower frequencies in it. You could really just use anything that you think could sound like a kick. Like I can hit my speaker and that already sounds like a kick. I can go right here. I don't know. Anything you could think of, the possibilities are really endless when you want to do it straight from scratch. There's a whole bunch of video tutorials on YouTube that show you different methods of like layering different sounds to create them. There's so many ways to do it, but I just kind of wanted to share this with you guys of, of a way that I like to do it if you want to just create it from nothing. But like I said, there's so many different ways from so many great people that are shared on YouTube on how to create drums. It's really just about getting creative and making something that you think would sound cool in a beat. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, leave a thumbs up. You guys can follow me on all social medias at Lifestyle Did It. Oh, just hit the mic. For everything else, hit my site, lifestyledidit.com. Other than that, subscribe to your boy, push notifications. Thanks.